It's never good to speak uh, before lunch or after lunch. <laughs> also not after breakfast or before dinner. But anyhow, you can uh, take a nap. Uh, as uh, I will not shout. Uh, I will also not show you any uh, charts, tables, or much text, uh, almost only uh, photos and uh, a few drawings. Uh, as Bart said, uh, I have uh, different hats, and, uh, but I will not talk today about uh, the ecology, about uh, pollution prevention, about uh, drainage and things like this, because uh, my added value here, I think, being an architect and urban planner, so I will try to give more the urban aspects of uh, river restoration. Water is everywhere. Almost all cities around the world were built along rivers or along the coast of an ocean, sea, or lake, and waterfronts are actually also everywhere. They have a vital urban role and are a major asset. I took here six examples of six different uh, of the six different. Uh, Continent starting with BBB, uh, I could choose any other uh, letter, and you probably know many of these. Well, during the 20th century, as we, we all know, many of the rivers have been polluted, deteriorated, lost a significant role, and the river became actually a nuisance to the urban uh, environment. But in recent years, major efforts of river restoration have brought many rivers back to life, but not only the big ones, uh, like Bart said, the Alexander River won the 2003 uh, River Prize. Its length is about the width of the two other winners, uh, uh, the Danube and the Rhine. Well, I'm exaggerating. We, are, uh, we have 40-something kilometers length. But anyhow, uh, this is a very interesting collaboration between Israeli and Palestinian neighbors. Uh, but I will not talk about it today because I was asked to talk about urban rivers, so this will uh, remain for the next presentation, although it is or maybe next year, because it, although it's much more interesting than what I'll tell you today. Uh, river restoration is on the catchment, on the basin level. Urban areas are usually just a very, very small part of the catchment, even in the case of what we call urban rivers. Uh, if we look at two examples, we look at Tel Aviv. Uh, Tel Aviv is in the Yarkon River catchment, which is probably the most important river in Israel, except for the Jordan River for other reasons. And uh, it is uh, just this red dot uh, in a catchment of uh, 1,800 square kilometers. But if we look at a big city like Wuhan, one of the largest cities in the world, which probably some of you uh, have ever have not even heard about. It's a 15 million uh, people city. It is not even one pixel on the catchment of the Yangtze catchment, which is just exactly 1,000 times larger than the Yarkon catchment, 1.8 million square kilometers. So uh, I will talk mainly, as I said, about uh, urban issues, except for the introduction, but uh, we have to remember that there is no such thing like urban river. There are urban sections uh, of rivers. 20 years ago, I was very young and naive. This is exactly when I started the Alexander River project, which was my first project. I thought river restoration is like preparing a drawing and a report, and everything can be done. 10 years ago, I was less young and less naive. I thought river restoration is like assembling a complicated puzzle of, different, uh, of the different aspects. Uh, this is from another uh, of the most polluted river uh, in Israel. But now I'm older and more realistic, and I think river restoration is like solving the Rubik's Cube. It's complicated, it's three-dimensional, it needs all the disciplines. If you can see there, there's wildlife, drainage, urban design, costs, parks, everything. In all scales, one wrong move, you move backwards a lot. But many people have solved the Rubik's Cube, and therefore we also know that many rivers have been restored, although there is a question when a river uh, is restored. To solve, in order to solve the Rubik's Cube, you need two hands. Without two hands, you will never solve the Rubik's Cube. One is the leadership, the other one is the collaboration. Without that, you will never restore a river. 
Now, all understand the importance of river and cities issues. Uh, there are two examples of the, your uh, Congress last year, or this year, or the, we see here Bart uh, speaking at the IRS at the International River Symposium in Australia um, last year. And uh, these are the river restoration uh, managers and professional uh, congresses, while on the lower part we see the planner uh, congresses like the ISOCARP, International Society of City and Regional Planners 2014 Congress last month, which was on water and uh, urban transformation, cities and water, which uh, I was uh, lucky to be the general rapporteur of this Congress, uh, dealing with water issues and rivers. And another uh, virtual congress last year, uh, World Town Planning Day, uh, also about urban waterfronts. Uh, I um, organized a panel of five experts of five uh, different uh, continents. One of them is sitting here, Nick. Uh, during, the, during the congress last uh, month, we also organized a waterfront planning marathon. Uh, we had a call, we had many nominations, and we chose seven uh, river uh, waterfront uh, planning projects uh, of different countries, as you can see here. And they uh, presented in 10 minutes uh, sharply, and uh, then there was a jury that uh, uh, selected Auckland as the winning uh, best project, and the best presentation was uh, selected by the uh, audience, and this was Twenchin in Slovakia. So the challenge is how we create a real dialogue between the sectors, academic, public, and private. I think I'm the first speaker here from the private sector. I think so, so far. Uh, I hope not the last one until the end of the Congress. And uh, of course, between the disciplines, between river restoration planners and managers, urban planners and designers, architects, environmentalists, sociologists, economists, infrastructure planners, landscape architects, decision makers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, because in many cases, it looks like this photo I took in Singapore that each of us talks uh, to himself and not to the other disciplines. Restored rivers and urban waterfronts. The rivers flow through both historic and new parts of cities, and they be can become a real urban celebration. This is, by the way, the first winner of the International River Prize in uh, 1999, Mersey River. Urban fronts is the place in the city for people to meet and enjoy. It's a huge urban potential. But what makes waterfronts successful? They shouldn't be just beautiful but also alive, part of the urban structure and life, but what makes places successful? And this example, not really in Europe, this is in Tasmania. Tasmania is an island that belongs to Australia, somewhere at the end of the world, kind of a paradise. Uh, Hobart, small city, this is a Sunday morning. All people of the city, and probably more, uh, were outside on the waterfront in what's called Salamander, I think, Salamander um, uh, market of Sunday morning. It was actually in the middle of the winter, as you can see. What makes this place so successful? How to plan a successful waterfront? There are no planning prescriptions. Every place is different. Planning principles can be defined based on analysis of case studies, but this should be very critically examined when planning a waterfront. Again, an example, we have two waterfronts which are well known, very famous, Barcelona and the Bund in Shanghai. I'm now planning uh, a waterfront of the Dead Sea, the tourism complex, 8,000 rooms, as you can see, Rihanna there, where for every meeting we have another celeb coming to the, uh, well, we don't bring them, we just take the photos uh, of, the, of the web. Every month we have a different celeb. Uh, actually, Madonna, likes to um, ride a horse on the Alexander River. But that's a secret, she hides when she does it. But anyhow, can we learn from, the, from Barcelona and the Bund when planning the Dead Sea? Well, there are things we can learn, but we have to be very careful. So let's talk about planning principles 
Uh, first of all, urban planning scale. Planning must begin on urban and even metropolitan scale. Planning, not only urban design. I was asked during lunch, what's the difference between urban planning and urban design? Urban planning, by definition, is an interdisciplinary uh, profession. Not all the planners think so, but this is by definition. Urban design is more how the places look like, what are the proportions of the place, uh, uh, what are the architectural, uh, in, in a larger uh, scale of the architectural entity of a place. So what is the definition and the role and vision on the wide scale? This is an example of the most polluted river in Israel, flowing through the metropolitan area of Haifa. It used to be for many years a nuisance, a place that nobody wants to get uh, close to, as you can see on the left side. But the vision of the master plan we prepared was it should be the place to combine, to integrate the two parts of the uh, metropolitan area. And this means that the ecology, that it has, to, it has to be a healthy river again, healthy ecology, and many other things uh, that make a river a restored river. Of course, we also have to think about floodplains and building restrictions when we plan an urban area, like this is a recent uh, a project where the uh, restaurants, the promenade, is the edge of the city towards the park of the river, and uh, we can see that it was planned exactly in the one to hundred years, and nobody will know that uh, this uh, park is actually a floodplain because once or twice a year it will be flooded, and one hundred years the whole park will be flooded. So we just have to know how to do it. Stormwater and uh, flood protection should also be addressed during waterfront redevelopment. This is a workshop in China. You see on the left side how it was uh, done, the walls that actually divide the city from the, uh, from the river channel, and this is what we have proposed to do it differently, still make the same uh, flood protection to the city. Mixed uses and variety of urban activities make a place alive 24-7. Uh, livable cities are based on the presence of people. This is another example, and the green fingers that go into the urban pattern may be the tributaries, for example, of the river. The waterfronts belongs to the public, open, accessible, free entrance, continuous. We need human proportions of buildings, squares, open spaces. And of course, we need public participation. The best and actually the only way to plan an urban waterfront is with the people who live there and use or will use the place. They can best define what they want and what the key values. I've worked in many countries um, uh, and with many different people, and it doesn't matter what language they speak and uh, how well educated they are and so forth. They all know when you build trust with them, they all know what they want, and they can all express it very well, and you can make a much better plan. Well, the water is the resource. The people should experience and feel the water close as possible. It doesn't matter, again, if it's Bangkok or Sweden. They all like to sit by the water, because the water is the show. Water is always changing, fascinating people. People always face and enjoy the waterfront, like the story with the five uh, legs of the sheep here. This is the only case where people stand with their back to the river. The only case. And the case is when the, this was in Switzerland, when then there was a ga uh, um, football game, Mondial game of Switzerland uh, against uh, Argentina. They fa the back was to the river. But this was the only case. I never saw people not looking at, uh, at the river. We have to plan the city like an amphitheater with open view to the water. The water must be visible for many buildings, public spaces. The people are the spectators of this amphitheater. We also need to, the, to plan buildings that should be transparent and use the advantage of looking at the water and the promenade. Uh, the, uh, we can see on the right side the Sydney Opera. It looks like a sealed building, but actually when you go inside, uh, you see that it's an open building where the show is, is the uh, Sydney uh, Harbour or Sydney uh, kind of fjord, uh, uh, the water. And promenades are for people, not for cars to wet run 
a place to enjoy, relax, walk, run, and cycle. Here you have exactly the same place in Brisbane, South Bank and North Bank. You can vote which side you prefer. Outside seating, promenades, terraces, food, and view. Look on the left side, you see a sign from, uh, from Australia. So easy there, you simply go to a coffee shop and buy some peace. Not the same in the Middle East. A livelihood promenade, urban life, a place to enjoy, a celebration. Just a few examples here of promenades along, uh, around the world. A life 24-7, urban celebration starts at night. People friendly attitude. This place is for people. Local regional values, history and local culture matters. Respect, preserve and strengthen the local values and atmosphere and this is one of the key issues of this uh, waterfront I showed you before of Hobart. This is the wonderful uh, atmosphere you have there and this is why all people went there on a Sunday morning. Local, fa local flavor, even if it stinks. Working waterfronts, preservation of activities, fishing, ships, boats, docklands, small businesses, etc. Delicate integration of built heritage and new development. Uh, a very nice um, example from Bergen and Norway. Uh, a controversial example from Melbourne. Restoration of urban pattern and buildings with waterfront orientation and creation of attractive flavor, sense of entity. And uh, important public buildings are usually on the waterfront to attract people and tourists and become a lively place like the new Nemo Science Museum in Amsterdam or other examples. And also urban landmarks, icons are usually uh, on the waterfront. Uh, I hate operas, but I like opera buildings. Look at the wonderful uh, examples. Connection to the built urban environment, green fingers into the depth of the urban surrounding patterns, park, boulevards, paths, bicycle routes, X's, etc. Uh, usually they are along the uh, tributaries of the, of the river, and actually you can build a whole network based on the, um, on the pattern of the, of the river and combined into the uh, urban uh, pattern. Of course, landscaping, uh, good planning, thinking of maintenance, art, and urban nature, talking with, I know there are many ecologists here in this room, uh, design some areas in the middle of the city where people can feel nature a pause from the urban pace. Of course, it's also important for the ecology. This is in the middle of the lively city 24-7 of Tel Aviv. This is uh, one area in the Yarkon River. Overcome challenging linear infrastructure is a very, very difficult issue when we have to, f to plan and find innovative ways to connect cities to their waterfronts. Despite these challenging linear in uh, infrastructures, or just not to place them there in the first place. Uh, somebody here talked about not doing new mistakes, so this is, uh, this is a good idea. There are some uh, examples here, and uh, one of the most uh, interesting projects, waterfront projects in the world, uh, uh, recently was the Bund in uh, Shanghai, and here we can see that the Bund project actually started with flood defense of uh, the city of Shanghai, of the older part. Uh, Pudong is on the other side, the new part of Shanghai. And uh, as you can see on the left uh, upper side, uh, almost all the cars that were there, it was a highway, went down deep under the ground. And what you can see here is this, is, this promenade is actually, first of all, for flood protection, used also for cars to park, and as an elevator, elevated, uh, uh, um, uh, promenade, a wonderful place, a very good uh, and creative solution of how to bring together all these aspects. Of course, uniqueness is also very important. Uh, Brisbane used to be the river festival, world-known city 
Um, now, we, of course, uh, the uh, river uh, symposium continues, but the river festival has changed over the, the years. And look at the upper left side. You can see the river feast. The river feast, 4,000 people dining on a bridge uh, over the river. This is a competition, used to be a competition, uh, between all restaurants in Queensland. Uh, you should have bought a ticket uh, for a good restaurant a few months in advance, and there was a jury, and it was a wonderful celebration with fireworks and so on. Uh, not anymore since I was there. I was there eight times for the River Symposium, and once there was heavy, heavy, heavy rain suddenly 10 minutes before the whole feast started. Everybody escaped, and since then, no more insurance for this event. No more river feast. But on the right side, now you can see the gala dinner in Australia, which uh, you will attend tomorrow, the one in, uh, uh, here in, uh, in Vienna. And on the right upper side, this is where you want to be. The $350 are waiting for you in, uh, in Brisbane. 350000 Australian dollars. Conclusions. Urban river restoration issues are relevant to all planners of all disciplines and all regions. Real continuous dialogue and integration is essential. Urban rivers and waterfronts are globally undergoing restoration to gain accessibility, recreation, and aesthetic values. This is crucial both in areas blessed with sustainable water resources and in areas which suffer from severe water shortage or floods. I couldn't talk more about it, but this was one of the major conclusions of the Congress last, uh, last month of the uh, ISOCARP uh, Congress. Citizen water issues are global, but also local. Cross-border and cross-region, we talk here about the Danube and Rhine and the Sava and other rivers, which is, which is where it is very clear. Multi-level and multi-scale comprehensive, inter- and transdisciplinary, and very complicated and challenging, but this is what makes it interesting. Urban rivers and waterfronts are an extremely important urban asset. They can become an urban celebration. Successful case studies champion urban development, economic growth, environmental and ecological sensitivity, integration of drainage issues, and contribute to a livable and sustainable city. Most successful examples of waterfronts represent good planning, creativity, innovation, comprehensiveness, sense of place, delicate balance between or among different uh, aspects, uniqueness, and patience. To restore a river takes many, many years. Uh, 20 years ago, when I uh, was selected to plan my first project, the Alexander River, uh, I asked the client, why did you choose me? He said, first of all, I thought we can work well together, and secondly, you were young, and I knew this project would take many, many years. <laughs> well, gradually, I uh, lose this uh, advantage, but I'm still there. Principles for successful planning of waterfronts can be defined, but should be critically examined, as I explained. Every place is different, but we can learn much from each other, and this is probably also one of the reasons you are here. This Congress will hopefully provide us with awareness, knowledge, know-how, and tools, sensitivity, passion to face the challenges in our daily professional life and improve the dialogue and collaboration between all disciplines, even with the urban planners. This issue proves again planning can make a difference, but dreaming about the future can be exciting. But in planning, good execution is everything, as written in the Singapore City Gallery. And finally, river restoration projects require optimism, leadership, cooperation. Thank you very much.